Let's take a look at type 1 diabetes. Just to review, diabetes is a condition where there's too much sugar in the blood. That sugar is glucose, and it's there for a reason, because it goes to your brain to power all your brain functions. It goes to your muscles to power your movements. And type 1 diabetes is special in that, in this case, the insulin that our body needs to get that sugar into the cell, well, that insulin is gone. Well, what is insulin? Where is it made? It's made in the pancreas, which is an organ that I think of as sort of like a remote control. It, it's about the size and shape of a remote control. It's behind your belly button, and it makes the insulin that goes in the bloodstream throughout the body, especially the muscle cells, the liver cells, some other parts of the body, to escort the sugar from the blood inside the cell. Type 1 diabetes means the insulin's gone. Well, what happened to it? Well, is it genetic? Is it environmental? Well, it's partly genetic. You do see that it can sometimes run in families, but if you have identical twins and one has type 1 diabetes, the chances that the other one has type 1 diabetes is only about 40%. So that suggests there is a genetic link to this, but it's not decisive. Something in the environment can decide whether that diabetes manifests or doesn't. Well, what could that be? Back about two decades ago, in 1992, there was a really decisive study. This was a study in which 142 kids, all of whom had just been diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, they had a blood test. And the blood test looked for antibodies. Antibodies of the type, th these are proteins in the blood that can attack the pancreas and kill it. And they found these antibodies in 100% of the children. Every single child diagnosed with type 1 diabetes had them. So what researchers now believe is that you don't just get this disease. There is an antibody, a protein, forming inside your blood that, just like friendly fire, kills off the cells that would be making insulin. So how do those antibodies arrive? Well, we believe that it's some foreign protein that the body is reacting to. See, that's what antibodies are for. They're there to kill germs, kill viruses, or they might react to an allergen. Well, what would that be? Well, it could be a virus, and there's some evidence supporting that. But it could also be cow's milk. Now, think of this. Kids were born not to drink cow's milk, but to drink the milk from their mom. And kids who are breastfed have a very low prevalence of, of type 1 diabetes. But kids who get the milk not from their mother, but from a cow, have a much higher prevalence. And it turns out that bovine antibodies, antibodies to the bovine proteins, the cow proteins, these seem to be able to match the proteins on our pancreas and destroy them. So does that mean that if we avoid giving cow's milk to kids, that we could cut down on the prevalence of type 1 diabetes? Well, it's too early to say for sure. But a study has so far looked at 242 kids. They were all breastfed, and then they were weaned to a, a, a formula that didn't have intact cow's milk proteins. And it cut the prevalence of these dangerous antibodies by 60%. So we're on the right track. I do, it does seem that breastfeeding and avoiding early exposure to cow's milk, maybe avoiding it altogether, is going to help. Now, does this matter? Well, it does matter. Because if you look at the complications of diabetes, it affects your eyes, it affects your heart, it affects your kidneys, and it affects your feet. Diabetes is one of the leading causes of amputation. So if I want to prevent those, let's say I've got type 1 diabetes, but I want to follow a healthy diet to prevent complications, what can I do? Well, you want to follow the same kind of diet that a heart patient would follow. That means something to keep your cholesterol down so that the assault on your heart is diminished. So what's that? Avoid the animal products. Make it a vegan diet. Keep the oils very, very low. And I like to use the glycemic index, meaning avoid sugar, avoid white bread. Have rye bread or pumpernickel instead. Avoid those big white potatoes. Have the yams or sweet potatoes instead. Those keep your blood sugar more stable. And when it comes to fat, so many people say, well, I'm not having beef. I'm having mostly white meat. Well, let me give you the bad news there. The leanest beef is about 29% fat. The leanest chicken, even without the skin, about 23. Difference is not so huge. Fish, they vary. Some are lower, some are higher, but they are never in the realm of beans, vegetables, fruits, whole grains that are mostly well under 10% fat. And let's say a word about protein. So many people think, well, the problem's got to be fat. It's got to be cholesterol. Sure, but what about protein? At Harvard, they did a research study on women who had already lost 
a little bit of kidney disease. And what they showed was the one predictor of continuing loss of kidney function was animal protein. So in other words, if you get your protein from beans, whole grains and vegetables, broccoli is 40% protein. If you're getting your protein from those sources, your kidneys breathe a sigh of relief. If you've decided that eggs and salmon is your thing, well, that's tough for your kidneys to handle. Now, you might say, this doesn't matter. I've got two kidneys. Well, let me tell you something. If you just went out on the street, about 30% of people have already lost some kidney function. If you've got diabetes, we're closer to 50%. Do your kidneys a favor, get your protein from plants. Okay, so to summarize, type 1 diabetes, partly genetic, but it's mostly environmental, and the environment means our diet. And to prevent it, we believe that avoiding cow's milk is probably the smartest thing you can do. And for people who already have this, a low-fat vegan diet can make the complications much less likely to happen. Thanks very much.